At this time, I'll call the work session to order. Um, let's get started. Our first actual business will be the ULDC text amendment, text 2024-1. Uh, this is the update, and we have a presentation by Mr. Dillard and Mr. Davenport, I think. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Good morning, commissioners. You have on your, uh, on your desk there the packets that we've prepared for you. This is a minor amendment we feel to several code sections of the ULDC that are ready for your consideration, hopefully for the March-April cycle. Uh, the first one right now being sign regulations. We've seen an uptick in commercial activity over the past year and a half, and several variances have been requested almost every time for certain signs. Uh, so staff has worked with our consultant, uh, Glenn Point, and we've come through, and you can read this on the second and third pages here, Minor things that just make sense compared to some of these more corporate franchises that come in with a, I'm going to call it a standard sign package. Um, our current code only allows one wall sign per the entire building. And many of these franchises obviously have three or four signs on uh, each wall, or one wall, one sign per wall on three of the four walls, typically. So instead of requesting a variance to this constantly, we looked at what we could do uh, to potentially be a little more business friendly uh, for these corporations coming in. So. Most of the sign amendments are around that style. Um, again, some things with directional signs, we can recognize the difference between automotive oriented and commercial manufacturing semi trucks. Some of the height limitations on directional signs to provide them safe access to their property and campus, those are also listed in here. Uh, but those sign regulations are before you, and we're, we plan to work with you guys and our uh, counterparts of stakeholder meetings as well going forward. You can see our timeline overall on that. But the sign amendments, uh, are the biggest one we have for you next. Uh, the second one in this package is a conservation subdivision. It's a minor amendment to, uh, to some language regarding septic tank systems, if they're used, and how we can work with the Department of Health on that. Uh, third, the third item in this amendment is procedures for conducting public hearings. Again, just aligning what the ULDC says and how the staff uh, and the board commissioners operate their meetings. Just alignment there. And then again, some minor amendments, uh, typos, formatting. We do have a few additional amendments we feel like we can get ready before that March 1st deadline as well. Uh, first one being vehicle repair shops. Currently, there's not a number set for the number of additional vehicles that can be stored on a property. It just says X. So we have that prepared. Staff believes we can find the number. Uh, agreeable from a technical standpoint for your consideration. And again, the second one there, the 30-day notice for variance advertisements when state law changed. We just want to clarify that in our code. Uh, that's the sixth amendment. Um, chapter. 10 submittal platting requirements. Some of our code language is outdated, requiring bylaws and blue lines. No one submits that anymore, so again, it's just an update, clean kind of housekeeping item. Um, and then the determination of completeness, just making sure, once again, when things are turned in, <coughs> kind of what the current practice is. Um, so again, just updating our code to what's actually happening in today's standards. Those are the majority of the amendments uh, we believe we can have for you March 1st for your April cycle. Any questions? Uh, thank you. 